record on Zoom. So we're going live on Facebook on the Positive Passionate Women in Business Facebook page. And we're also recording it on Zoom so that this can be accessed later on for anybody that wants to rewatch it um, in the Positive Passionate Women in Business Facebook group. So I'd like to say hi and welcome to this beautiful Positive Passionate Women in Business member of our huddle, Eve Heath. And um, let's get to know Eve Heath a little bit more. Eve is from Heath Sold Wares. And um, hi and welcome to you. It's nice to have you Thank here. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. Great. Now you're in Barrymore. Hi, Kylie. Pardon, sorry? It's a bit exciting. It is. I'm so excited. For those of you that don't know, Eve and I have known each other for, I'd say, 12 years now. Yeah, it would have to be. Yes, we lived next door to each other for about, well, it wasn't quite a year, but nearly, in Bangalore, when Heath Sold Wears used to be in Bangalore. And Eve and I became firm friends very, very quickly, didn't we? It was a beautiful meeting and then we were both very involved in the Bangalore Businesswoman's Networking Group um, and the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> yes. Eve and I both are people that very much love to do um, things to do with your community. So how many years ago was it now that you moved to Barangbar? This we've just gone past our fourth birthday. Wow. Amazing. It's gone so fast. Wow. So Eve um, and Ross quickly, uh, not quickly, they moved their um, business, bought a building in, in Barambar. And from everything I've heard, they've literally turned the village around and, you know, really made it a place on the map, a bit of a destination. So we'll hear more about that anyway when I start asking Eve some questions. Um, but yeah, Bangalore has definitely missed you, Eve, and of course, Ross also, you're just an amazing community woman, and I know you've been doing amazing things for the community of Barangbar as well, and northern New South Wales, so good for you, Thank and you. Um, good for the community too, might I add. Anyway, let's get stuck in with our questions. So the first question that I'd like to ask you, Eve, is tell me something about yourself that others might be surprised to know about you. I'm a woman scorned is not someone you want to know. <laughs> That's probably the hidden secret. <laughs> not to do it. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I definitely only know the other side of you. <laughs> It doesn't come out often these uh, days. In the 20s it did, but not so much these days. <laughs> but you've got that feisty side though, yes. standing up for your rights and all. Well yes. done. I love it. <laughs> okay, so if there was something in your past that you were able to go back and do differently, what would that be? Probably apply myself a little bit more, have a little bit more self-confidence to study longer. In the era that I went through high school, we, I was expected to do fourth form in our day, get a job as a checkout chick, get married, have babies and do it all again sort of thing. Um, I've done a lot of study as a mature age student. So I've got my cert four in IT and web design. Um, and I don't do it for anyone else. I did it so that I could build my own website and maintain it, which I've done. Um, and if you Google old wares, we still come up number one after all of the ads and the near me's, which is just awesome. And that's an organic thing. So I think I would have, I would have studied. I would have probably gone in and had a career more than just been, well, I say just be a mum, but I think that's the most important career a woman can have. Rad. Good one. Thank you, Eve. So what do you love most about what you do? Oh, the history that goes with it. You know, we get... We get a few reviews on Google that say our prices are hideously high or horrendous prices, but great stuff. But what they don't understand is how much respect we try and give to, and we do give to the people who we purchase from. That's their life in the shoebox, you know, and you just can't go in and, and offer them dog bones for what's been their life. And that's why we've been successful in doing what we've been doing since 1990. There's a lot of businesses that have come and gone in this world, in, in our industry. Ross has such a, a solid 
well-respected reputation and and that's a great that's one of the big reasons for it because we respect the people that we deal with and another interesting thing on the other side of that of people writing those kind of things is that they never take into account the amount of hours and the expertise that you have and the traveling that goes in. I mean, I know Ross does some extraordinary miles, doesn't he, to the deceased estates and those kind of things and spends so much time. And then your job of, well, I know you've got a massive role in there, but also doing the website and the social media and all that stuff. It all takes up so much time and people just and don't realize. My comment usually is, thank you so much for visiting. We're sorry our prices don't suit you there is a lot of time and effort and energy that goes in seven days a week to sourcing all of our goods and they're not imported from france they're not the latest vintage thing to come off the market but we're not a vintage store that imports from europe this is all locally sourced you know like and, and it's local. we clean it all it goes on the floor and it's a 24 hour a day seven day a week job <laughs> so if they don't like the prices, they can go to Bunnings. And they're not your ideal client. That's the bottom no. line. So no. yeah, we've all just got to focus more on who we want to work with, isn't it? And That's it. And you know, on the other hand, you get people coming in and saying, oh my God, your stuff is so amazing. And it's so reasonable. We get other shops buying from us to <laughs> sell in the hair shop. Yes. And so we just have to start to... I think one of the big lessons that we all have to learn in, in business is to value your own, your own effort, your own product, your own hours, your own time. And if we don't value it and put a price on it, don't go into business because you'll just go broke. That was the webinar I was listening to this morning was exactly that about valuing your pricing and your time, et cetera. So that's a great, great thing that you brought that up. And also for those of you that don't know, Heath's Old Wears is quite famous in many ways, but um, people wouldn't even realize that you do um, movie sets and fitting out amazing restaurants, not just around the area, but in Sydney and all over, isn't it? That um, people come yeah. to you for props and... yeah. I mean, we get dresses that come to us from Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, and we have sent our, our items to oh, all over the country um, and to London and to Germany. We actually, some of our little Heath Old Wears things are in Disneyland in, in Europe. Oh my word. <laughs> Where some of our things are in tea houses in London. So, um, it, it you just and you never know you cannot tell and and that's the other thing that you have to be so careful of is not to judge anyone who walks through the door just because you know that you think they they don't look like they're going to be of interest to you or they don't look like they're going to be a customer you cannot tell you treat everybody with equal respect and some of the set dresses some of the um, the big names like Olivia Newton John used to call it go down to my shop, go down, they'll have it, go down to my shop, you know. Um, so, I mean, we can drop sort of all sorts of names, but that was one of the biggest buzzes for us when we were in Ballina. It was like, oh, my God, you know, flash, flash. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. I we love just it. the biggest, we, we actually framed the um, the first docket that she ever signed, her f docket. <laughs> That's so cool, Eve. I love that. So for those of you that um, haven't yet found Eve, so in the you'll notice in the caption there's um, website, Facebook, you know, all the places that you can find and locate them and, and um, yeah, have a look at all the pickings. So, yeah, rad, rad shop that you have, that's for sure. Okay, so um, what do you love least about what you do? Um... Probably the amount of hours that it takes, the amount of... You were going to say that? It's, it. it's all consuming. And what we have to learn, and what I've learned, but not everybody in the industry has learned, <laughs> Ross, is you have to own your business and not let your business own you. And it's a really hard call. Um, and we've got one of our kids are in business and I have just 
drummed it into him so much. Don't open seven days a week. Don't, because then when you're closed, you're not thinking about how you're enjoying the day. You're thinking about, oh, my God, how much money am I down because I'm not there. Mm-hmm. Make your decision and, and you own your business. And, yeah, don't, don't fall into the trap of letting the business own you. And we're really fortunate in that I can go and I'm going next week to see us, one of our sons. Um, you know, I can go chuffing off to see the kids in all corners of the country or New Zealand. Um, and Ross is really happy to be here. But then Ross always says that he retired the day we opened his sold wares because it's his passion and his love. So to him, he's not, he owns his business. He works in what he loves to do. And to me, I think, no, I want to do something other than be in this, these four walls. And that's the thing I'd like us both to go together, but one's a traveller, one's not. That's just the way it is. Everybody's got to compromise. And um, that's probably the thing I, I least enjoy about the business. But the business allows me to go and visit the kids when I want to and have the kids down when they come and abduct my grandchildren and take them on granny road trips. <laughs> That's so, so awesome. <laughs> so awesome. Oh, thank you. I just knew it was going to be a time thing. And I guess that's from living next door to you and knowing that it's just extraordinary the hours that, that go into it. So yeah. yeah, but I love that you're able to go off adventuring and I'm really going to take away from that, um, from this chat already. I know we're only up to, um, that was question four, but I know that the one thing that you said about not letting the business own you and that you own the business, I'm, I'm going to be um, pondering that one tonight. So thank you very much for my own business. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so if you weren't doing this, well, what would you be doing? I probably would have gone and done a teaching degree. Uh-huh. I think. Teaching or hairdressing which is quite ironic. I have a teacher in, in one of our children and I have a hairdresser in another. So. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Wow. Yep. I make no apology for living through my children. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you can just live vicariously through them. That's great. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Eve's son is also rather famous in his own right. He has hair by Tommy J. And um, he's in Sydney and a very, very well-known barber isn't he Eve? Yes, yes, we just opened up the second store. Doing incredibly well, good on him. All right, so what's been your biggest success in your working life? What are you most proud of? Oh, our reputation. Oh. Really, in short, I think your reputation is everything in business. Um, I mean, as put family aside and kids aside. But your reputation is crucial. If you can't hold your head high and if you don't stand by what you firmly believe in, if you're not true to yourself, then you're not going to be true to your business. And I think that that is, it's crucial for people to, if you don't agree with something, then don't go there. Don't accept somebody else's standard to be your own. It's, you have your own standard. It's so important to maintain that. Eve, that's the third pearler of the night that I'm going to have to go away and ponder. That was, that was brilliant too. Thank you. So who are your dream clients or customers and what type of jobs do you like doing the most within your business? Uh, research, probably. Oh. Um, like today, I set up, I don't know if you looked at the Instagram post today, Ross came home with this amazing big red toolbox. And I said, it's not a toolbox, it's a spice rack. (laughs) Looking at things and not seeing what they are, but seeing what they can be. And people that are open to, they come in and they've got this, I call them Excel spreadsheet people. So they've got no vision of what they can see. You know, what they look at a spanner and it's a spanner. But an offset spanner is a fabulous door handle and a trowel. a plasterous trowel is a good tool but it's also an awesome coat rack you know because you can rivet them onto the doors and blah 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 anyway and to watch the faces on people when you say what are you looking for oh i want i want a coat hook but i really want something a bit different and i don't really know what i want you know so you pull out the drawer of coat hooks and you say well 
have you thought about, let's go for a walk. And they're like, oh my God, no, that's a great idea. Oh, and I say, okay, now go and play, look around the shop, pull things down, have a good look, get dirty, we'll let you wash your hands. And then look at things, not for what they are, but for what they can be. And this light bulb moment comes on. It's so, it's great. They sort of, all of a the sudden, their, their mind is expanding. Oh, I have to go home now and reassess about what I'm looking for. That's great. Take some photos, take some measurements, go home. Yep. Eve, that just reminds me of the most amazing moment when I was visiting your store and saying how I wanted to, to display my balloon balls for my old e-commerce business at the trade shows. And Ross had an old wooden, big, massive beach umbrella and the, it had all ripped. And so we tore those off and we would hang the balloon balls off these wire things. And then I'd had this massive crate built and it, um, we just got this extra thing put on the site. Anyway, the whole thing came together amazingly and people from the, you know, their shop owners at the trade show would come up to me constantly and say, how do I do that? The, the, you've just displayed it in the most amazing way. And I'd go, it's an umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> and people couldn't believe it. You also set me up with amazing, beautiful rustic shelves made out of ladders. And yeah, there has been some cool things you've helped me with. So I'm, I just, I can't imagine how excited people get when they get that opportunity to wander with you and, and get some really cool, cool ideas. So yeah, that's a really cool thing that you offer. It's fabulous too to see things that would have ended up in landfill that are now cool basins or cool light shades or just repurposed and reused, like like this toolbox. On its side, you've got these two awesome shelves, one with little pigeonholes, one long shelf, so that you can have all of your spices down here and then all of these little, it's just awesome. <laughs> and, thinking, and Ross is saying it's not a spice rack. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm looking it up on Instagram right now while you're talking. I'm so excited to see it. So for those of you that also want to look while we're chatting, it's um, Heath's Old Wares on Instagram. And yes, it's so cool. I love how that front bit juts out like that. Yeah, it gives you that extra... You know, and, and if you flipped it the other way, when you had all your pigeonholes down the bottom and all your little jars up the top, it's just awesome. You no, don't look at what it is. Look at what it can be. And yeah, you know, people yeah. come in looking for different things and, and they say, oh, we've got some of those in the shed. And I said, well, go home now with an open mind and look at what you've got in your shed. Don't buy anything today. Come back after you've searched your shed. Looking at Instagram, it just gets me so excited of your pictures. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, stop. Okay, focus on what we're on doing. So my next question is, what challenges do you see impacting your industry? Now, that does not necessarily mean um, COVID challenges. That just no. The challenges big challenge for us is, is trying to be relevant. And like, Ross has got this amazing eye where you and I could go to a garage sale and think, oh, well, that was a nice drive. Let's go and have coffee. Um, and then we'd get home and he would arrive home and we'd say, oh, wow, where did you find all this cool stuff? And he would have gone to the garage sale after us and he would have found it. We just didn't see it. Blinkers uh. on. So I suppose the challenge for us will be continuing to find the stuff, continuing to, to find things that have been made 10 years ago that are worth hanging on to, that are worth re repurposing, that are capable of being repurposed. Do you, you know? think, do you think the fact that these days there's um, Ikea, oh. for, like all of that type of stuff being made is not anything that will be worth hanging on to because it's not, it's, all landfill. it's not hardwood no. and you know, all of that. Like I'm really conscious already of how quickly well, not already, I mean, for decades, how quickly people can furnish a house for mm. so cheaply and they're not exploring and finding amazing treasures. And, you know, we found our coffee table was on the side of the road in Sydney when we were living down there 20 something years ago. And, and it's, it's an old school desk. Oh, it's an old school desk. It's absolutely yeah. divine. We love yeah. it. 
somebody had chopped the legs off. So it was this great. We would never do, you know, do that, but we found it like that. We love it. It's got shelves in it. It's yeah. so cool. And we've moved a gazillion times and always taken it with us. And then and once it's been kept stable, it. you tip it on its edge, you put heavy stuff on it, you can use it as a seat, all sorts of things. Yeah. And we've never once been tempted to replace it with a coffee table that is, you know, made out of chipboard or whatever you call it here, um, you know, that's laminated or something. So I could imagine that that could be a thing going forward. Um, yeah. Maybe not for your, for your next 20 years in business, but for anybody that wants to do what you're doing in 20 years time, or like, for example, for Clover, you know, my daughter at 17, if she wanted to go into that business, that type of a business, that would be an, much harder, wouldn't it, to be sourcing and... Yeah. And, and we go, you go through cycles. So, you know, like you'll get um, the English China stuff that, that was, you know, really flavoursome, you know, in the 70s. And everybody had to have Dalton because Dalton was the brand. We've never stopped Dalton. We champion Remude and Newton and, and Diana Ware and Fowler and... Um, Bakewells because they're all Australian potters. You know, they were all made around the Newtown area back in the 40s oh, and the 30s. And, and you know, you drive through King Street, Newtown, or down around Alexandria, and you see these huge big chimney stacks. That's where they were made. You know, that's the pottery, the pottery capital of Australia. So we sort of have always gone in for Australian pottery, Australian glass, Australian anything. The Yakuba is in the background, the dryers are bones. You know, that's it's Australian stuff. So that's what we've always championed, and that's why that's our point of difference. It's Australian, it's not imported, it's very little English stuff in our shop. It's all pretty much off the farm Australian stuff. Eve, I think you need to do a YouTube series. That would be so <laughs> awesome. Oh, Everybody, jump into the comments below and let me know if you'd like to see a YouTube series coming from Heath's Old Wares. That'd be so <laughs> good. Okay, Eve, what did you want to be when you were little and you talked about when you grew up? A hairdresser. Aha! So, it's been a long, 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 mm. lifelong goal or whatever the word is. Oh, very interesting. Okay, well, if you're an animal, what would you like to be? My cat. That doesn't surprise me either. Beautiful. <laughs> I love that. I'd like to be your cat too, might I add. <laughs> okay. Beautiful Zebedee lives in, in Talgum now, and I'm Zebby's grandma now. Oh. From Bangalore, we, we, we had nowhere to keep him safe and to, to house him. And we had to rehome him. And we had oh, four or five different people say, oh, we'll take him, we'll take him. And when we went and looked and we examined where he was going to go, we decided that, no, that wasn't really suitable for what Zebedee was used to. And then at the 11th hour, this person got in touch with us, Henny L from Flutterbyers up at Talgum. And we didn't know each other, but being in the Tweed now, we cross paths through tourism Aww. meetings and different things all the time. And she send me, sends me photos of, of um, Zebby, And so I'm Zebby's grandma now. That's and gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's so special. Yeah. So, Eve, if you're a movie character, which would you, who would you be and why? So what movie Winnie would you be in? Pardon? Winnie the Pooh. Ah, I love it. That's great. That is gorgeous. All right. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Um, probably not far from where I am. I would think, special. yeah, I think so. Um, I wouldn't live with anyone other than the person that I'm living with. Oh. Although it hasn't always been a bed of roses, as you remember. But um, I would probably be where I am. Beautiful. Yeah. So we're up to question number 13. And mm -hmm. we've, so we've only got a few more to go. So this one is, what does being a positive and passionate woman in business mean to you? It means, as reiterating on what I said earlier, being true to myself, being true to my values, being true to our values, as in Ross and I, because we're a very old partnership coming up to 40 years this year. So it's, um, yeah, I think that's probably what it means, is, is not 
not going to networking for networking's sake, but to be able to help someone, to be able to link. We had a young girl in here today who works in the film industry in LA, but she's Australian. So she's, she got home just before COVID broke out. So she's here, not going back for this foreseeable future, wants to get work over here. So we've done so much with local film companies and, and whatever. So I've given her the name of one of the leading film set dressers, you know? Um, a young kid came, well, it wasn't a young kid, but another person came in once and, and he turned out, he was a set dresser, I gave him Emma's name. He got work with Emma doing set dressing and now he's a set dresser for MasterChef. And it's like, oh my God, MasterChef. Oh. <laughs> you yeah. know what I like, MasterChef diehard. Although not this season, but with the old boys, yes. <laughs> but you've just summed it up so beautifully because that's exactly what we're about at our core of positive, passionate women in business is, is giving, you know. Connecting people. Growing and giving and sharing yeah. and all of that. So that's beautiful, beautifully put. Okay, so what are you most proud of in your life rather than in your business life? My kids. And they are four amazing kids. They oh, are very poor amazing. Poor, very amazing children. Yes. They sure are. Awesome. And your last question is, what's one tip that you can share of how you stay positive when things are challenging? It's an adventure. Just look at it. Breathe. It's an adventure. Yesterday it was this. Tomorrow it will, it will be different again. Just breathe. Um, my daughter once wrote on a Facebook post when I'm feeling down I remember whose daughter I am oh. and my response was when I'm feeling down I remember whose mother I am <laughs> so that's that says it all <laughs> sure does that makes me have a little tear that's just <laughs> that is gorgeous Eve thank you so much and thank you for joining me for 15 minutes that turned into 35. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I always knew we'd, we'd uh, love to have a good chat and you just have so much to share and you're so amazing. So thank you for sharing that time with us today and answering those 15 questions, which I have to say, I am loving this whole series. It's been so awesome um, getting to know people in our huddle better and being able to then share that with everyone out there, which is really awesome. And we just love having you in our, in our huddle of positive, passionate women Thank in business. You. And especially that you're the timekeeper on um, the yeah, online we reader. Busy last week when we when last meeting. <laughs> well, we look forward to having you for the next one. That'll be great. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And um, so for all of you that want to connect with Eve, as I said, it's in the caption, all, you know, her website, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll be able to um, connect with Eve and, yeah, get in touch and go and explore what's on offer in Burring Bar. That'll be absolutely wonderful. So thanks, Eve. I really appreciate Thank that you, time. And it was awesome to see you and chat with you. We'll have to have a hug soon. <laughs> I know, I look forward to it. All right, thanks. All so, right, bye, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye. You.